everybody. Welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Joey. And I'm Jeremy. And it's been a while since we actually recorded one of these. I know it's only been a week for you guys, but it's been like two and a half, three for us. Yeah, so uh, over this over this long time between episodes, we have been listening to uh, Kid Cudi's, I think it was his first official mi- mixtape. I know he had one back out in 2001. Uh, his first, I guess, official mixtape called A Kid Named Cudi. And so the best thing I can find. Well, at least I, I, on a music service. I'll yeah, that. yeah, he had one, and I found like rips of it on YouTube, and it was it was pretty cool. But this is like where I guess he first started developing his real style. And I mean, we both like Kid Cudi. Like, yeah, we were, so, we're both big fans of Kid Cudi. But I don't. You said you had never heard this, and we we said something about Kid See Ghosts on the last episode, so it's that's true. why I picked it. It's true. It was it was out of the blue. It was new, and it was good to go <laughs> i was waiting I was, I was i was waiting to see where that was gonna go yeah uh like you said it's it's been a few weeks so if we're rusty with our segues then then that's what that's not why we're just bad at segues but yeah. it, it honestly it doesn't feel that long for me so yeah because anyway. you probably had a fun time i was i was that's I was true gonna, time I'm flies still in health. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're, we're gonna fucking get right into the intro I was gonna okay. Were you gonna Intr- segue into I intro? Was, I was gonna segue to intro, but you know what? You segue to intro, so track it. We're just fucking. This, I just want to get back into it, man. Okay, let's get back into it. What intro? Intro. It's that's the first track, which I mean, obvious, but yeah, I mean, it's it's an intro. Period. What are, what are your uh, initial thoughts, Jeremy? <laughs> well, it's got some movie theater ambience. It's it's like a skit. <laughs> Right, so it's, it's like it's just like him talking. But there's a lot of background noise, and he's just it's it's like someone's going to see a movie or to experience an album, perhaps. Which is it's it's cool. It's a cool concept, I suppose. It's got some like plucky acoustic that comes in, and then like a string swell that leads right into "Down Out," which is the first actual song on the album. Yeah, but the only thing I had to say about intro before we start "Down and Out" sure. is uh. It, I don't know. You've listened to Speed and Bullet to Heaven, right? Yes, not as much as a lot of his other albums, though. So, like, I feel like, and this is probably too much for uh for an episode where we're talking about an album that has seventeen tracks, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's like so there were a lot of skits on Speed and Bullet to Heaven, and I feel yeah. like this intro it was it was like a skit intro, and I mean you used to hear it like you heard it, you used to hear it on like. A lot of mixtapes, or like uh, I think Slim, uh, the what was it, Slim Shady LP? I don't know. I'm not. Super... Yeah, Eminem does a lot of skits. Yeah, on all and his albums. It was like that kind of feel is kind of what I got out of it. But yeah, down and out, second track. Now I guess I'll ask you for your real initial <laughs> thoughts because this yeah. is an actual song. So this is an interesting way to approach this album, I suppose, because as you said, we're both fans of Kid Cudi. I've listened to all of his other albums. I think. Uh, which I mean, just all of his albums, because this is a mixtape, not an album. I, I don't know where the, fucking, <laughs> where the line is drawn there. Um, but yeah, uh, Speed and Bolt to Heaven is probably the least listened to of all of his albums by me. Um, but this, it, it, I don't know, It's it's got a quality to it of Kid Cudi still trying to figure out what Kid Cudi is. Yeah. To it. So it, it's he sounds a little bit like less confident i guess in the delivery at least in this track and, and throughout this album it, it feels like he's a, a little less confident in his skill which obviously it makes sense and it gives it more of like a, a rough kind of feeling at some point but it's kind of the staples of kid cutting you know there, there's some muted guitar that introduces kind of a, a hip hoppy beat there's some synth strings for the chord progression it comes back with some wah for so, some like melody and stuff there's a lot of vocal riffing which kid cutty does a lot of he just kind of like hums and he he sings and he he vocalizes without saying words a lot, um, but yeah, it's it's Kid Cudi. It, it it's a kid named Cudi. It's it's clearly what I would have expected and what I did expect, I guess, of his first production, his first official mixtape, I suppose. Uh, layered vocals, another kind of thing that Kid Cudi does a lot of. Uh, at the end of the song, the music starts to melt and kind of detune a bit, and then it kind of feels like the machine has sputtered its last breath, and then the next track starts. But yeah, overall, it's it's 
it's a little rough. It's a little raw. And I don't mean that in, I guess, the way that I've often described a lot of music you listen to and that it's like underproduced or anything, but it just, I don't know, the, the lack of confidence in the lack of feeling like he's comfortable with it, I guess, at this point, kind of, it, it caught me a little bit off guard, but then I was like, well, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's something I had to remind myself, honestly, several times during this, because I... While this wasn't my complete and total intro to Kid Cudi, this was pretty early. Like, I mean, I had listened to Man on the Moon, Man on the Moon 2, and this mixtape. Mm -hmm. And then another one that was titled uh, Mr. Rager and the Smoker, or maybe it was the Smoker and Mr. Rager. But it was like a mixtape that he did with, I guess, some some other guy that I actually don't. I, I don't know what his <laughs> name is. Yeah, the smoker. Which is weird considering Kid Cudi's per, like persona, I guess, that that he wouldn't be the smoker. But I mean, he yeah, is well. Mr. Rager. So, <laughs> but but yeah, I I had never really noticed the drop in kind of not necessarily in production, but like. Just like it's a mixtape, there's a little bit of rough sounds on it. There's a yeah. little bit. It's not as fine tuned as like something like Man on the Moon or Man on the Moon Two. Even though, I mean, he had a pretty good production team behind him. It's still yeah, it's, it's, this this mixtape was produced by Plain Pat and Emil, who uh, I think Emil is a very successful. I, I don't. I'm not as familiar with Plain Pat, but I know Emil has produced a ton of very successful albums. Yeah. Granted, I guess I don't know how mu how many of those were at this time or if this was kind of towards the beginning of a meals kind of deal but yeah he's a very well-known producer i think at least in hip-hop and stuff now yeah and uh something else that i like about this album that i don't know how other people might feel about it like this song and a lot of songs on the album are essentially just straight rips of other songs like the yeah. music and it's him just singing or rapping over it like this song it's the music is pretty much just a rip like i call it a rip some people might call it a sample i call it a rip because it's more than just like i don't know yeah, sampling. It's, it's kind of this weird like cover territory yeah but, but using the original yeah I, I, i'm sure there's a term for it but yeah I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the term is yeah and i don't mean rip as in like rip off i mean like rip as in like he just took it like right. ripped it out and put it but it's he it's, got the stems of the original tracks and just kind of went with it yeah and this one was taken from uh, Outcast's Chonky Fire, which you, you know they're always good for good song titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, this is where I think he started, like like you said, he's trying to find himself. He's trying to find who he's going to be. And that's why I think this works so much, where it's like he's trying to figure out his style through other people's songs. Like, I like the original of this song, but he takes it and makes it a Kid Cudi song, which yeah. it's like something I wouldn't associate. I wouldn't hear this song and think, ah, oh, it's just somebody trying to take over an Outcast song. I think this is yeah, a completely yeah. separate song, and I like I like both of them. Yeah, and I, I I'm not super well versed in hip hop history or anything, but I feel like back in the day it was a lot more common to hear something like this where there's yeah. just a beat that gets passed around from... I mean, if you look at, like, just classic music in general, and, like, I guess not classic as in classical, but, like, a lot of, like, older pop songs and stuff, they were performed by, you know, 12 different artists. Mm -hmm. And they, they were all, like, even the lyrics were the same. Granted, there was some, obviously, some, like, room for tweaking from artist to artist, but a lot of those big, like, classic pop staples and like Frank Sinatra territory or even like yeah. back in like the, like 30s the ink and spots stuff, or the something ink spots and stuff like that yeah like the the songs got passed around i think and, and i think i think kid cuddy maybe not intentionally was going for something like that but i think in some weird roundabout way i think he would he would like to view this as that yeah and, and, or or something cuz he he that that's just the vibe that i get from him and that like he he likes to share music and not not necessarily take it or or use it as like some hack to being uninspired or something but like i don't know just just the nature of music back then was a lot more simplistic and a lot less litigated I yeah. so which which i much prefer and i think a lot of 
a lot of people who are strictly creative, I th I would like to think that they prefer that as well. Because, I mean, it's still creativity to take something. Yeah. Maybe somebody else came up with the with the music to it, but you can flip it and make it your own. That's that's still a version of creativity. Maybe yeah. it's not the creativity where you make the song from the ground up, but it, you make it your own. So Yeah, and at this point, again, Kid Cudi didn't really have a sound for himself. Uh, so this was kind of him, like... Pulling, pulling inspiration, or I guess not even inspiration, but like pulling from other artists and seeing what what he liked from them and kind of forming his own sound through other music kind of a thing, which you, I think you pretty much said earlier. But no, I'm just repeating it <laughs> to, to make it sound like I'm smart and making some grand cool points. <laughs> well, you know what? We're both smart and we're both making grand cool points. And I guess we'll get to the lyrics because I feel like we've spent like 20 minutes on this song. Yeah, it's fun. But, but you know, this, like, I don't know, if you're out there and you've listened to Kid Cudi, which you probably have because he's pretty big, uh, this this song is kind of typical Kid Cudi song topic. It's yeah. He's talking about his mental health issues and how it's kind of formed who he is now. He's looking to get fucked up to get rid of what's in his head and talking about overcoming that, becoming the person that he is, and doing his own thing to make his music. Yeah, it's it's very reminiscent of uh, like the beginning of Man on the Moon, mm -hmm. his first album. A lot of this album is, is kind of similar, and I mean, even one of the songs is on Man on the Moon. But... Three of the songs are, technically. Oh, are we gonna... Okay, okay, we're gonna have some things. <laughs> but yeah, e e even in here, like, uh, he, he also introduces the concepts and names of solo dolo and man on the moon and, and things that are very much associated as uh, kid Cudi characters or nicknames, I suppose. Yeah. Which is kind of, kind of cool. It's kind of like an origin story, which I mean, it makes sense because it's his first official mixtape, but yeah. Cause I mean, he's always out there like talking about doing your own thing and it's really inspiring. Just wondering if like, is there any love for people who are still making their own way in, in the music business and life? It's yeah, it's pretty inspiring. I'd I'm, I'm glad you took that because I, <laughs> I, I was, I was beginning to tread water and realize that I was running out of, uh, out of stamina. <laughs> Track number three is, is there any love uh, featuring your boy Wall A? Hell yeah. Which uh, I did not know. I, I, I didn't know a lot of the, production or, or credits and stuff until getting my notes together because I didn't look at Genius. So I didn't, I didn't really know. I just had song titles to go off of. But yeah, yeah. Wally's in the song. Uh, this one is one of the ones that ended up on Man on the Moon End of Days as as a bonus track on like the Deluxe uh, Edition. So, okay. yeah. So, yeah, I don't think I've ever listened to the, the Deluxe Edition, strangely. It's weird because I didn't know because I... <laughs> You know, I was a teenager when I started listening to this music. I didn't pay for all of my music. I'm going to go ahead and say that. <laughs> How dare you? I just downloaded the album. Didn't know that it was... I didn't look up the disc, like the track listing. Right. I just had the songs I downloaded, and I got the deluxe edition. So I was like, okay, the song is on there. And, you know, it, it was only a bonus track yeah, it's for people interesting that paid how extra that, money. It's interesting how that'll, like, form... Because that... that this song is now in your perception of what Man on the Moon is. Yes. And it is not, or was not, at least, in my perception of what Man on the Moon is, because I only ever had the the CD that I bought with my money from a <laughs> store that was not the digital uh, edition. So, yeah, it's it's kind of kind of strange to think that... I mean, I guess that's why they're bonus tracks, right? They're, yeah. they're not necessarily integral to the album, at least from the artist's perspective, but... They, they can become integral as someone perceives it as the, like a full product with the bonus tracks kind of a thing. So. And I still never took it in as part of the story. I think I still was able to parse the actual story of the album because his albums are yeah. broken into sections. And I could tell that this was like tacked on at the end because the, the three songs were kind of put at the end. Yeah. So and I feel like this one has a pretty distinct feeling from Man on the Moon. Like, Man on the Moon, as an album, in End of Day, has a feel to it for that, that kind of flows throughout the whole album. And like you said, it's it's broken up into, like, three acts as, like, a story, and there's even, like, narration and stuff on it. 
uh, by Common, I think. Shout out to Common. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I feel like this the song distinct has a distinct feel from that. Maybe just because I haven't heard it in the same context, I'm thinking that. But it definitely does. I'd say like yeah, th- this one ha- it has like an old school hip hop kind of drum kit loop on it. Uh, I don't know any of the sample credits on this, so I don't know <laughs> what is being taken from other songs. It's a uh, Dear God by Monsters of Folk. Which was a band that Jim James from My Morning Jacket was in. Okay, so. those are names that I'm vaguely familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I really like the the drum kit sound that they that he has in the sample. Uh, it's a very stripped down song. There's no chords. There's no melody. There's occasionally some like brass hits, um, but uh, there there is also another sample in the chorus that I did look up from uh, a guy named Trevor Dandy, mm-hmm. and the song title is named after it. Is there any love? Kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of groovy. It's kind of yeah. standard hip hop fare. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's a lot on this album that I ended up. Whenever I was trying to write notes, it kind of came back to standard hip hop. Which yeah. this is that sounds bad. <laughs> yeah, but... especially in the context of Kika, because so there are elements of it that are staples of hip hop, but. Kid Cudi has always, even on even on this, he talks about it a lot on this mixtape, about wanting to do things his own way and put his own twist and not necessarily adhere to, at least at the time, what was popular and what was trending necessarily in a lot of hip-hop music. And, and I think a lot of this like sampling of other things and specifically the samples he uses and the way he raps and, and the way he sings, like uh, there's a lot of novelty to this that, that hadn't been seen in a lot of hip hop prior. So it's, it's not to discredit him by saying that it's, it's standard hip hop stuff because there are elements that are, but there's also a lot of creativity and, and novelty brought in. Yeah. And I guess I will state that I probably do have a bit of bias because of the type of like hip hop rap that I that I would listen to cuz I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't listen to like not to sound like a fucking hipster but I didn't listen to too <laughs> much of like the radio hip hop type stuff right and which was I'm, which was is I mean I guess it was always around us yeah because it's there there are like three radio stations around us <laughs> yeah but but it it wasn't something that you sought out Ex- yeah and so this is very much in the style of stuff that I would have listened to back then, which mm. granted could have not been what was out there. It, I mean, I probably listened to it because I thought it sounded different and it does kid cut. He like, he, he definitely puts his own spin on it. I, he, I just wonder I was looking up just lyrics just to make sure I had everything right for my notes recently. It was, there was an article that was like why people love kid Cuddy's humming or something yeah. on the front page. <laughs> and I was just like, he, he, he just has his own, style that it just hits you and not necessarily like he doesn't really do it too much in this song right but it's it's just he he adds something that nobody else can add and it's because he does he does shit his own way yeah it kind of feels like he has more like soul that he puts yeah. into it in yeah some way. yeah this one and i mean so as far as the music goes it's it's more fast paced i guess than like down and out in the sense that it's it's got more energy to it. It still has a like a chill, laid back feel with some like heavy bass kicks, like the eight oh eights. Yeah. That it feels good and then the like you said, the brass brass stabs that come in. But yeah, it's it sounds more like a rap song than some of his other stuff, I guess. Yeah. And lyrically it's also kind of not not to discredit what he's trying to do with this album, <laughs> but even lyrically, like it, it's kind of just bragging about the lifestyle of being famous, uh, or or like, wait, I think I skipped ahead. <gasps> I'm so my notes are so disorganized this week. I apologize. How could you? But yeah, it, it's 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 just kind of like a, a typical like bragging kind of like being a rapper. Half of half of what you rap about is bragging about being a rapper and being better than the haters and then thriving in in the negativity and, and getting out of that kind of thing which i don't know it felt weird because at several points on this album kid cuddy is trying to make himself to to not be that to kind of rap about what's real and what will have an impact on people instead of 
bragging about where he is or or talking about the things that every rapper talks about and and being relatable which i I don't know i feel like half the tracks he he nails what he wants and then half the tracks it kind of feels like he's maybe just kind of giving into the the i guess theming of a lot of rap being better than everyone like other rappers and and kind of just i don't know it felt somewhat generic to me i suppose yeah directly. and i think he's trying to go for like look what i did by i i did it my own way and i'm i can still say this because i still made it out on top but i do feel a disconnect between songs like this and songs like man on the moon and yeah. embrace the Mars, like stuff that you're going to hear later in the album and it does seem like he hasn't quite made it to that point yet for him to reflect back on it because there is a lot of and i mean i know he was his own like local thing like he was big before like there's a reason this he got this mis- mixtape out like yeah he, he wasn't just some fucking nobody before this came out he was obviously had a following and everything but it does seem kind of weird it seems like he took the ha- the introspective introspective half of this album and then was like, this is what I need to focus on and made Man on the Moon. Yeah, like, and maybe I think part of that could easily be that he had probably written some of these songs prior to the, the conception of having a mixtape kind of a thing released. And so yeah. like, there, maybe they're just remnants of his past where when he was coming up, he was still trying to kind of fit some of that and then he realized that he doesn't want to just rap about the same boring shit all the time and he wants to actually make an impact with his lyrics and stuff so maybe, maybe there's there's some justice some validity into having some songs like that on here especially because this isn't even on like a studio album yet yeah and i mean i guess if he wanted a mixtape like what cuddy wants cuddy gets like <laughs> <laughs> kill it i'm so glad you're on, on your game tonight because i am not on my game for segues at all track number four cuddy get uh this what, one what, it's get. what's it get? yeah it's it's get gets i i guess i was one letter off but it's it's fine but this one it's built off of a song or like a beat that was actually made by jay dilla who is another artist that we need to look into on the podcast if you okay. haven't. I've not. I, I have okay. no idea. Who, any, I could not name one song that Jay Della has released. It's fucking sick, dude. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's beats, but I mean beat heavy. I guess I should say okay. it's not only beats, but I'm okay with. I mean, I'm okay with only beats. A relative to Kid Cudi, Ratatat. He uses a lot of Ratatat collaborations. Yeah. Uh, and I love Ratatat, so I'm okay <laughs> with just beats. I guess is what I'm saying. Hell yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. What'd you think of this song, huh? Yeah, it's so it starts with some like little kids singing "Come on, feel the noise," <laughs> uh, which is kind of interesting. It's also in the chorus, um, but yeah, it's it's got some kind of quiet guitar and some jungly toms to it. Wait, why am I? My notes. Okay, no, that was right. We're that good. was right. That was good. My You're brain. Right. Is, I'm so scattered this week, guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it's 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 good. It's it's not my favorite on on the thing. But it's it's got some. You mentioned earlier "Speed and Bullet to Heaven," and I feel like it's going to come up a few more times because <laughs> it's very much a similar sound. Yeah. Uh, which I mean, I again, it's I haven't listened to "Speed and Bullet to Heaven" a whole lot. I definitely haven't listened to it recently. Maybe I should have gone back and listened to it um, because I don't, I don't know. There's there's for those who don't know, "Speed and Bullet to Heaven" is kind of more of a, like an indie rock kind of vibe yeah to it I, I don't know what necessarily the right words for the, the genre are but he he has a lot more stuff that sounds kind of like this where it's just like it's guitar driven hip-hop music i suppose yeah which is, it's, but it, it's it's not like eminem's like uh what, what's his fucking why can't i think of his song what the song that was like the lose eagles yourself. song no lose, oh, yourself. lose yourself okay uh, it's not like that kind of guitar like it's it's like rough crunchy like like rock kind of guitars, rocky, I guess. grungy, almost punk kind of loud guitar noise kind of thing. But yeah, the the song kind of reminds me of Speed and Bullet to Heaven. I guess is the roundabout of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, Speed and Bullet to Heaven. Not to keep harping on an album we're not talking about, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of like yeah, it's like the Black Sheep. Like a lot of people, I feel like I've heard don't like it. Yeah. I I like it. It's not. I mean, it's not my favorite or anything. 
but think, it was like i think for me personally i know this is again way off topic well not way off topic but off topic i i feel like for me personally it's just because wizard existed yep and it, it feels like it would have better suited a wizard project than a kid cutty project i was actually about to say that same exact thing we're on a fucking we're on the same wavelength <laughs> maybe was... maybe that i don't know i don't know what i was gonna say my brain yeah sucking. I don't know what you're going to say either, but this, yeah, this song, it feels kind of chaotic with the way that the drums kind of like have this off kilter March yeah. feel to it. And then there's like the background. It's like, Ooh, like type thing going on in the background, <laughs> whatever it is. But yeah, this one, it's more of your typical braggy type stuff from hip hop around that time. It's like, he's kind of feeling out where he can kind of go, or maybe this is his comfort zone and the other more introspective stuff of, is him feeling it out i mean it's a cool vibe song but yeah it's not it's not my favorite on the album yeah, either there's not a lot not a lot going on there unlike his his first album man on the moon in, the in parentheses in parentheses the anthem <laughs> i don't know if is that an official I, I mean i guess genius has the like actual back art of the thing so i guess that is an official subtitle youtube music does not have any uh subtitles to any of the songs that are on this mixtape for some reason. Also, YouTube Music did not have uh, Day and Night on here. Yeah, which is, I, I had that message Joey and make sure that we were doing it because it wasn't. On, I don't know. I don't know. YouTube Music, you need to get your shit together. Is, is what I'm trying to say. For real, like I don't. I don't understand it. Also, another song. We'll, we'll get to that song whenever it, it gets okay. there. But Man on the Moon, strike number five, the anthem in parentheses as a as a subtitle. This one has some reverse samples which are always cool. It's got some distorted bass, some light Danny keys, some soft acoustic guitar, things that are kind of cool. I'm going to give you a quiz before you go any further. Dear Lord. Do you know what sample this is? I, uh, I don't think I wrote it down. Let me look at the lyrics and get the song in my head real quick. Uh, no, I, I, I have the song in my head. I don't know what the sample is. Okay, it's no such thing. That's his song. That's the guy's name. His song's Aquarium. I was asking because uh, for your for your little your little excursion, you asked me to make you a, a playlist, oh. and I put this song on there. Did you? I did. Man. Okay, so <laughs> I went on a two week road trip. For those out of the loop, and Joey made me a playlist. I listened to the playlist on the first day of my road trip, going out. It was a terrible playlist, by the way. Like, I just was not... I don't know what I was fucking doing. Um, whenever I it, it wasn't bad. It, 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 I don't know. Some of it made sense. Some of it didn't make sense. But uh, I listened to it one time, and I kind of had a, a mental rule in my mind that I wasn't going to listen to the same album twice. And I think I extended that to that playlist. So I listened to that playlist on my way out. That was the first thing I listened to when I left. Uh, and I never listened to it again and have not oh. listened to it but there were some songs on it that I, I wanted to come back to but it was just kind of like a mental thing where i was just like okay i'm putting this aside this was this was step one this was me leaving the house and getting out on the road and then i listened to entire discographies by other bands and never listened to the same album twice in two weeks which doesn't sound like an impressive feat but i drove over six thousand miles so that it was a lot of music that it was just kind of like I'd say that's, you know. that's pretty impressive, honestly. Like, I can't even go the same day without listening to the same album twice sometimes. <laughs> so, like, yeah, but yeah, I did not pick up on the sample. Shame on you for pulling that over on me. Shame <laughs> on me for not realizing it. I guess I did uh, it on purpose. So, yeah, that that sounds like something you do. Did not notice. I do like the sample though. I I like the the just everything in the song. It's, it's got a lot of nice texture to it with a lot of like vocal samples and the music samples it's not a super loud prominent beat it's got some like beatbox samples in it and i think it benefits from that and just overall the music direction i really enjoyed in this track yeah definitely the sample choice and i mean the extra production that was added on top of it because i mean it's not just the, him playing the exact song and right. rapping over it but like there's there's added stuff to it but it's just a very good choice for i mean the song's called man on the moon his his kind of alter ego is the man right. on the moon solo do like he's he's alone he's an outsider and the song very much reflects that it feels like you're on the outside looking in in space just kind of out there on your own and it just does a really good job of highlighting that 
I agree. And lyrically, it's about him. Th- this is like the most Kid Cudi track, I think, on the album, which yeah. makes sense because it's Man on the Moon, which was also the title of his next two albums. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's it's about him trying to bring that new perspective to the rap game, both lyrically and musically. And it, it's him defining himself and saying, you know what? I don't care if you don't like it or if you don't understand where I'm going with my music. I like it and that's how I'm going to make it. And you know he does, which is pretty cool. It is. It's very cool. Listen to all of his albums. <laughs> yeah, They're listen to fantastic. Every single one of them. And then, you know, say a prayer for all the people who aren't ever going to be able to listen to them because they, they don't want to, Kill I guess. Kill it, man. Kill it. <laughs> Track number six, The Prayer. Boom. Joey, I don't, I don't know. It, I feel like you're you're taking all of the... The, the energy that I'm missing. Like it, I've, I've thrown all of my segue energy into the ether and you're pulling it in and you're just knocking these out of the park for me, which I love. Sucking it up like some sort of segue sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Track number six, the prayer. Uh, it's got some more, some more kind of cutty vocal riffing stuff in the intro over like a muted beat. The song starts and has, again, it's, it's not like a super prominent, big, like typical rap beat. It's just a kick, a snare, some little like light guitar lick kind of goes on. There's some the the chorus hits me with the drums because there's like some soft ride cymbal and the snare. It just sounds nice and yeah, some little synthy boops for for flavor. It's just 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 delicious. This is a great song. I fucking love this song because I actually discovered so the song the the sample on this one is a band of horses song. It's the funeral and. Holy shit, do I like Band of Horses. <laughs> and never, never heard of them or listened I, to any of their music. I kind of like started listening to them both at the same time. I mean, I, I think I did hear of Kid Cudi first, but I had never really put together. And then I heard the Band of Horses song not too much later and was like, oh my God, this is fucking great. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's just this cool guitar part that's just kind of like gentle and... I mean, it really complements the way that he sings. He's got this very emotional, like like you said, he vocalizes a lot of. Yeah, I, I, it, he has a way of putting <laughs> his his like I I don't know I don't know if I want to say pain, but like his feelings. Yeah. Into just sounds, not words, but sounds. Right. And it's it's just great. Notably, like like you said, Cuddy has a very prominent humming that he does in a lot mm-hmm. of his songs and people fucking love it because it, I don't know, it just feels so, it feels good. It feels warm and it feels real and it conveys what he's feeling. And, and it's, it's kind of strange and that, but mu- music be like that, you know? Yeah, it do. It really do. <laughs> <laughs> Lyrically, uh, this one's, uh, another kind of defining song for him. I think it, he's talking about not being afraid to die and instead he's using his life to speak on what's real instead of, you know, running the same rap game that everyone else does and rapping about shit. He, he calls out, uh, he says, so if I slip away, if I die today, the last thing you remember won't be about some apple bottom jeans with the boots with the fur, <laughs> which fuck that song. Bro. It fucking, oh my God, what a time that was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, Wait, God he, damn. This is him distancing. He's like, that shit yeah. doesn't matter. No, he doesn't want someone to like, hear him say those words because they don't mean anything there's no there's no there's no way that that's going to impact anybody and that's what he wants to do is kind of have some sort of impact on the listeners and and the world potentially and you know scott since we're on a first name basis for whatever reason dude if you're out there i mean i know you hear this all the time but you really did you made an impact for sure that, like, like fucking man on the moon one is one of if not the album that kind of pushed me into hip-hop and i i always like credit man on the moon one as being like the album that made me understand hip-hop and made me get into it kind of a thing not that i'm like super into hip-hop in, in general but it, it, that's definitely what like it, it turned me from the like man all this hip-hop bullshit like rapping about apple bottom jeans <laughs> with the fur. it's like okay there's there's something here for me that i can enjoy kind yeah so good on you scott yeah rock on man you know it, it was like day and night the switch that hit <laughs> in me <laughs> killed it man track number seven 
day and night everyone's heard this fucking song yeah i don't think there's anybody out there who has not heard you, this song. you know how the song goes it's, it's kind of spacey this is kid cuddy this yeah. is his sound with a lot of like spacey sense and, and i i'm not gonna talk about the music because if you haven't heard the song a you're a liar b go listen to it and you'll know because it's 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 a good song but yeah i think i think this honestly might have been the first kid cuddy song that i ever heard just like i heard it on the radio or yeah, something it was everywhere it was huge and it, I heard it before I realized it was Kid Cudi, probably, and like before I would considered like hip hop as a thing. But but yeah, Day and Night, it's it's a fantastic track musically. I love it, everything about it, and it, it's this is the pinnacle, not the pinnacle. This is this is the <laughs> the the first big like defining track for Kid Cudi, and I was surprised that it was on this mixtape. Yeah, it's it sounds so different because like. I don't know. Again, my perception is that Man on the Moon, every track on that album feels like it belongs there. Yeah. And there's just like, there's a flow. There's just, there's like a tone to every song on that album that kind of flows from track to track. And hearing Day and Night outside of that context is kind of jarring. And it, it kind of like it it makes my brain kind of freak out and be like, wait, <laughs> why is why did this exist outside of Man on the Moon? Because it's such like an integral part of Man on the Moon for me. Because he was building to that, and right, this, logistically this... I understand it, but yeah. like it just, it, fe <laughs> it feels so foreign to hear it outside of that context. Yeah. Also, I forgot to mention. Man on the Moon was also a song that was put on Man on the Moon as a bonus track. That was uh, one of the three. I that, actually that one makes sense. That one yeah. I can feel being on Man on the Moon because it has a similar vibe. So that makes sense to me. Yeah, but day and the, day and night. I mean, it's I don't know what to say about it that hasn't already been said. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, it's it's as far as lyrics go, it's about like him just being on his own, like living his life, doing his thing. I mean, he's he's on his own at night just doing his doing his thing trying to make his music smoking because you know that's that's what kid cuddy does that's one of his defining characteristics yeah, <laughs> for real <laughs> but yeah he's just yeah. doing his thing i mean it's talking about he's he's on his shit he's making this mixtape for us and living his life yeah and there's, there's kind of an undertone of it that like he's alone i mean again he's solo he's mr solo dolo like the, the the lonely stoner mr solo solo dolo like there's this undertone of sadness that like sadness and loneliness but he's he's able to set that all aside right it's kind of the, the dichotomy of him is where like he's sad and lonely but he lets it all get, go away you know he he gets he gets through his days he gets shit done despite that and he's he's able to set it down maybe with the help of weed but <laughs> he's, he's able to like subdue that part of him to get his shit done yeah, I mean the the parts of him that make him feel alien, make him feel foreign. Like he he just really sits down on his own. I like you said, maybe with the help of weed, he embraces the Martian to help. He I, sure I guess does. make make this beautiful <laughs> art that we get to experience. Fuck it, you're like eight for eight at this point. Boom, boom, boom! Embrace... Only nine more to go. <laughs> <laughs> God, we're running out of time. Embrace the Martian, track number eight. This one's got some more like electro synths kind of thing going on with it. It's got a driving kick bass. This one reminds me a lot of Heart of a Lion yeah. from Man on the Moon. I don't know if it was like a direct inspiration or anything from it, but just like the drive and the, and the flow of it and and how he raps it kind of kind of gives me that feel. Uh, a lot of the music drops out in the third verse, which totally fits the lines because he's talking about destroying the world and rebuilding it. Hell so that yeah, that was kind of a cool touch. It's always nice when the lyrics and the music are on the same page. Yeah, I think Adam Neely has a has a video about that. If you guys want to go check it out, about whenever the the uh, the lyrics in a song reflect what the music is doing. I think usually it's the other way around, but you well, know, that's you that's know. a discussion in itself, I guess. That's a discussion for another episode. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> One day we're gonna do all this. No, we're not. Don't lie to the people. <laughs> but yeah, the third verse and going into the bridge, I really like the bridge as well. It's just. Man, like, yeah, the beat backs out, and then his just his voice going into the bridge whenever he's just like actually singing over kind of the sparkly 
synth keyboard, whatever line that's going on in the background. It feels like you're flying through space like a Martian. Which you is know? Kid Cudi's his his aesthetic. He likes space. He likes the moon. He likes Star Wars. <laughs> He's a huge Star Wars fan. Well, rock on, man. I remember That's awesome. a side, slight side tangent about this. Uh, I think it was for The Force Awakens. One of the newer Disney Star Wars... It had to have been Force Awakens. He uh, bought... bought He rented, I guess, a full like theater for one of the showings for the force awakens and just like he tweeted out saying the address and he's like hey like if you show up at this address with some kid cutty merch i'll let you in and we can all watch the force awakens together oh like, how fucking God. cool is that that's awesome you're gonna get some crazy fucking people showing up though <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it is, there's a limited time obviously because it's only one theater but yeah i guess that's so, true that would be kind of a cool experience anyways the song uh, I mean, again, it's Embrace the Martian. It's kind of, kind of there in the title. Is is him struggling with being accepted for the untraditional music that he's making and not letting the naysayers put, put that to a point that it stops him from making music. He, he doesn't want to stop making the music. He just wants people to accept him for what he is making, and he wants to elevate people. And he's not going to be—he's not going to be deterred by the haters. Yeah, you got to embrace the Martian within you. The—the the thing that sets you apart is what you need to—to to live with. Like, it's—I don't know. It's—it's it's a running theme in his yeah. music that the more you embrace what makes you different, the more you're going to be able to find yourself and create some some cool shit like he does. I mean, one of the one of these days, like if you create something cool enough, it might even send you all the way to Hawaii where you're going to land and like, I don't know. Have you ever been to Maui? Like, wowie, dude. It's, it's fucking great. The biggest stretch on on the album. I was waiting for it. I was like, man, he's really going hard for this. Drag number nine, Maui wowie. All I gotta say is wowie, Joey. Oh, God. Fucking, you made it. This one yeah. kind of carries over some of the, the electronic elements from the past track, the prior track, and it's a little spacey, but it also has some, like, kind of typical club vibes to it. I don't really, like, understand this track from a production standpoint, <laughs> or like, it's just, even in the context of this album, it doesn't really make sense to me because it, it's, it sounds more like a club party track kind of a thing. Like, it's 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 more of that kind of boots with the fur, right? Where, yeah. where it feels like it's not really about anything. It's like his smoker aspect coming out, I guess, where it's like, I mean, because I mean, in day and night, it's not like he's trying to hide anything. Right. Like, but it's it's more focused on the introspection where this is more focused on like the the smoking aspect of it. And I mean, high in Hawaii, man. Yeah, exactly. Like he's <laughs> the song is literally about going to Hawaii with the sole intent of buying a specific strain to to smoke. And then because it's just that great. Uh, apparently <laughs> apparently it makes him go wowee <laughs> and then it ends with a fart because yeah. fart jokes because <laughs> fart jokes which is this is the second one on the album we didn't mention it in the intro there's also yeah, a fart <laughs> there was <laughs> and I don't really like i don't I, it's, just, it's so jarring it feels like especially coming off of like embrace the martian and, and yeah. day and night to, to end up here it, it i don't know it feels very out of place for me i think yeah. that i think this track could maybe be left off the next day I this is I will say back in back in my days this was one that would always get turned up just to like we all like everybody sings the the chorus and you're just like everybody knows all the words but that's that's not necessarily what I now listen to Kid Cudi for I just fucking... what did you just do sorry I was I was trying to find the chorus of the song is literally just going back to Honolulu just to get that Maui Waui. Like it's, it's, I'm so high. I just, I, I'm I've so never high. been at a, at a point in my life. Obviously, we have very different backgrounds, Joey. I guess is the root of this. But there's never been a point in my life where I would have been in a car full of people or a room full of people singing this. Well, you know, it just like, it feels it feels cringe, bro. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's there's 50 <laughs> ways to make a record, dude. Like you don't you don't have to. You I don't, don't have to, to agree with it. I can find one of the other 49 ways to make a record. Yeah. There's also 50 ways to leave your lover. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. So you did some research on this. Track number 10 is called 50, 50 Ways to Make a Record is track number 10. Yeah. And it's it's samples heavily. Samples heavily. It uses the music from Paul Simon's 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. Yeah. This is the big, this is a big one where it's just, <laughs> it is literally just 50 Ways to Leave Your right. Lover. It's a bar it's the not, chorus. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It, it doesn't have the chorus section from 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, but it's it's straight up there which is a song i had already heard i didn't do research i was just like this was the one that i noted that i caught like, this is another song i know this song even but, the like the vocal melody and everything. yeah everything it's it's, a, it's like a parody kind of yeah. or a cover in the kid cuddy fashion of it but uh yeah it's a pretty summery chill vibe got some clean guitar instrumentation got some some boops and beeps to kind of tweak the song and make it more his thing i think especially in the outro that kind of blends into the next track, but it's, it's this point. I was like, okay, this is a very distinct sound from Maui Waui, which was the prior <laughs> track. And it kind of makes me wonder if Maui Waui was more meant as satire or included as like just a reminder, maybe to himself or maybe to the audience of what the typical like hip hop style was. I guess, and just to, to further distance him, because, you yeah. know, black looks blacker when it's next to white kind of thing. Like, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, th that was my way of trying to justify how distinct Maui Waui was from the rest of the album. It was just like, well, maybe, maybe it was meant as an inclusion specifically to, like, set apart the rest of what he's trying to do. Yeah, and it, even in a way be like, hey, I can do this too, but I'm choosing yeah. not to. Yeah, I can see that. Because I mean, it's reading it, too much into it. <laughs> I mean, when we think about this song and even the next few songs, it is a stark difference, especially the songs before it, like before yeah. Maui Maui. Like the the three songs before that were Man on the Moon, Day and Night, like Embrace the Martian. It's like completely different songs. I kind of wonder. No, I'm thinking because Nine is like it's like the midway point of the album, so yeah. maybe maybe this was him first experimenting with the idea of chunking up an album into sections that he that then carried be. over and in, into like the acts of man on the moon and stuff but maybe maybe it's giving him too much credit maybe it is but he deserves credit he does scott you're you're a cool dude <laughs> not trying Pretty to sell cool. you short i just don't get maui wow <laughs> <laughs> i do but i don't anymore i think like not necessarily that it's more like, that's not, like I said, that's not what I listen to Kid Cudi for, at least right. anymore. It's more like, because I mean, he broke ground, I'd, I'd say, in like subject matter when it comes to mainstream-ish hip hop. Sure. Like with the talking about like, I don't know, struggles of mental health, mainly more on Man on the Moon. But yeah, like, he, I mean, I mean those, those roots here. are very clearly here. Yeah. In this album. 50 Ways to Make a Record, uh, it's... Again, that's kind of about the difference between the music Cuddy wants to make and the music that everyone at the time was making and, and him just kind of saying like, look, there's, we don't have to keep making the same record over and over again. There's so many different ways to, to make music your own. And this is, this is my way to make music and it's acceptable. Just like obviously the way that hip hop was going to like the, the kind of standard hip hop fair. Like that's, that's also a way to make a record. That's just not the way he wants to do it. Yeah. Yeah. A way to differentiate, say differentiate yourself without necessarily putting down other people's choice of making music. Right. Though apple bottom jeans and boots with the fur. What the <laughs> very, fuck was very, that? Very bold call out. Not really, it's not a bold call out, but yeah, very fuck that man. Fuck all that music that we grew up having to hear through radio stations yeah whenever i hear that music just whenever i hear that music it makes me upset it makes me physically sick <laughs> and whenever i hear kid cutting music <laughs> it makes me a little more happier fucking killing it track number 11 is whenever, whenever. <laughs> we got that. you're you're slaying it man slay yes queen slay yes queen yes joey slay this one has kind of an em empty metronomy beat kind of thing, starting with the word focus when, he, when they say focus. And it really like grabs my attention to focus on what he's about to say kind of thing, which was probably his intention, uh, not getting into the lyrics just yet, but like 
it just it was a, a very interesting way to start the track just saying focus with <laughs> nothing else going on really pulls your focus uh it's got some string swells that come in at his command like he mentions them and the it's, lyrics and the strings yeah. swell in it's it's beautiful there's some sense in the chorus section but very cool track man i would still just have the urge every time i hear the word chorus where the chorus <laughs> <laughs> man go listen to kids see ghosts people do it. Listen to this <laughs> album and then listen to Kid C Ghost. Because I mean, I think else that Kid Cudi's touched. I think Kanye and Kid Cudi were like working together around this time. I don't know if necessarily on this mixtape, but I know they were going into Man on the Moon era stuff. Yeah. Because so. uh, Kanye has been featured on most of Kid Cudi's albums. Yeah. I think if not all of them, they had a period of time where I think they had a falling out. Bef- oh well, maybe. for like a little bit before kid see ghost like i think kid see ghost announcement was a surprise but i don't i don't keep up with the hip-hop beef yeah that's such a silly thing yeah i I get it i mean when when so much of rap is about being better than the other guys it's bound to happen yeah but i don't know it's just it's 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 a culture that i am not a part of and therefore struggle to understand sometimes yeah and but yeah the song is not about that it's not it's it's about uh wanting a a woman and yeah. whenever and however she's got him it's a love song yeah I, I i i would i would classify it as a lust song well sure but L- lust is how rappers show love yeah <laughs> and i mean like it it makes it, the song placement makes sense because you know after a lust song like you got you just laying in bed pillow talk like I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up. It no, was, oh, it was an no, expert segue. No, no, no. Track number twelve is pillow talk. I just want to call it one line specifically. Do it that uh, I caught, and I I want to kudos to you. She he says you dance in my mind like justice. Yeah, <laughs> which <laughs> me as as a nerd, uh, justice is a a group, a electronic dance music producer production i don't i don't know how many people are involved i'm not like super into to knowing a lot of that <laughs> stuff about justice regardless there's a song by justice called dance it's d-a-n-c-e and, and the line was a reference i really like that album by justice and that's why i wanted to call it out because maybe if you haven't listened to cross by justice you should go do so well you know what that song actually made me listen to that because i heard that album and i was like who's justice and then i looked so it up good. it's and... they released a an album a few years back too called Woman, I think. Woman, you know, you're a woman. <laughs> yeah, woman. Like, like that. <laughs> Pillow Talk, track number 12. Boom. This you one made is slower. The segue. I just backed up. It's slower and more intimate. It, uh, it's, it does more singing here, like in its typical style. Yeah. I, I really like the beat and the general feel of the song. It's, I'm, I'm not usually one for like the slower, I don't know, like. I don't know, like the Barry White type bedroom R and B style, yeah, like that type of stuff. It's usually not my jam, but this song it does it for me. Like I like it. It's, I mean, it doesn't do that for me, but, <laughs> but, but I, I just like the way it sounds, and I can listen to it in a car and sing along. <laughs> I'm sorry, the song does not do it for me. What? I, I don't know. It's this track is, is kind of a hard listen for me, honestly, which hurts to say because I love Kid Cudi. But, like, I feel like more so than any other track, his, like, lack of confidence or experience in, in singing is very evident in his vocals in this track, I think. just it, I don't know, it feels very rough and, like, it, it faltering in some ways, and it just, I don't know, I, I can't, I'm very picky with vocals. I'm, I want to be better about it, I suppose, but this track is... It, it doesn't both the the lyrical content not being something that i typically listen to and his vocals not not being what i know that they are now yeah it, it's i don't know it makes it kind of hard to listen to I that and I, that. i'm not really into r&b in general so like i don't know there, there's a lot of reasons i dislike this song i suppose that just we're gonna culminate. we're gonna get some r&b on this podcast i'm gonna hate it but i'll do it i will still i i there are some r&b songs that i'm okay with i prefer more like soul stuff when it comes to that when i think of r&b specifically i think of like again the the pop r&b that was played on the radio when we were growing up that i fucking hated like usher and stuff like that I, okay i i don't like usher i, I guess i'll, I'll i guess i'll hop on i cannot handle that music that is where i draw the line Maybe some was, older R and B and like more like again more soulful music. I'm totally down for. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 
with R like older R and B. But you know, I don't like the radio R and B that was playing whenever we were whenever we were we youngins. It Me was either, man. I, I didn't I, like it. I felt like listening to it. I was just begging for someone to come and save my soul. Ha! Ha! You did it! I did it! I made a segue, guys. You did it. <laughs> Track number thirteen: "Save My Soul," the Cuddy Confession. Ooh, there you go. You see, you've got the subtitle there. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote them down in afterwards, but during oh. my listening experience, I didn't. Anyways, this one's got a really cool jazzy soul beat to it, which I mean, the track's called Save My Soul, so that's kind of fun. It's got, got some cold synths, <laughs> some crispy bass, some nice drums. It samples Gnarls Barkley, Who's Gonna Save My Soul, which I lo- <sighs> I'm a big fan of Gnarls Barkley. I guess they're kind of R&B as well. Yeah. You could, you could argue. But again, I feel like that's more like soul music than R&B but maybe I'm just wrong in my perception of what R&B is. <laughs> that could be, but I also don't have a much different view on what R&B is, so well, I could also be wrong. I don't know. We're all Who wrong knows? all the time, always. Don't listen to us. But yeah, CeeLo Green, he's, he's a good singer. I like his voice. Yeah, he is. I guess, to, to clarify, Gnarls Barkley is CeeLo Green and Danger Mouse? I think yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Danger Mouse. I know he did stuff with Danger Mouse, yeah. and I'm fairly certain it was Gnarls Barkley <laughs> that he did with Danger Mouse. Yeah. So CeeLo Green also a popular artist and it as his own thing. But the song that is being sampled in this song is a Gnarls Barkley song, I guess is why I'm clarifying. <laughs> and CeeLo Green comes back on uh Scott Meskety versus the World, the Indeed. opening track to Man of the Moon Two. Yeah, which is another great album. Go listen to all of Kigoti's albums again. <laughs> We're we're done plugging other artists with yeah, just, our discussions. We just keep plugging the same artist over and over again. Everybody, listen to them. <laughs> listen to everything that we talk about, guys. Yeah, for you real. Expand your musical horizons to include shitty '90s R and B and songs about boots with fur. Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they've already heard "Get Low." Was that the name of the song? I, I do not know. <laughs> I can't see when you say "Get Low." I think of Lil John and the Eastside Boys. "Get Low." Was it's that not the no. same song? That's not the same song. Yeah, I don't know this song though. It's uh, yeah, it's good. Like it starts off with that sample. It sounds like it has like rain in the background, which is cool. Yeah, something that I noticed with my headphones that I listen to music through. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the the beat has like a cool little guitar line and a nice drum, and yeah, like you said, it just just feels nice. It sounds good. Yeah, it's and kind I of like, an, like an interlude kind of track. It's it's one of the shorter tracks. On the album, I don't have the times up, but... 203, two minutes, three seconds. Yeah, it's pretty relatively short. It's not necessarily a short song, per se, and it's not an interlude, I guess, in the typical, like, 30-second interlude kind of thing, but it felt kind of like that, just at the point in the album and, and the whole feel of it. It just kind of felt like it was just a kind of way to ease you into the, the rest of the album, which, again, maybe he was playing with the idea of having a split album like that into sections, but... This one's uh, lyrically another fuck the haters song <laughs> talking <laughs> may- maybe closer to Cuddy realizing his dream and finding peace with his success instead of worrying about his past friends who criticized him and tried to make him feel bad for living his dream. This is where he's like, he's, he's getting it. He's, he's right there. Yeah. This one I always took is like a, he's making it and he's wondering why it's not helping how he feels, but he's still just like trying to, trying to be like fuck you guys i'm making it but yeah. it's not necessarily helping it's him. not fixing his mental health problems yeah but you know thank god he's fresh because <laughs> he's got that going for him thank god he's fresh tgif featuring, featuring chip the ripper <laughs> <laughs> who, who now goes by king chip by king chip way. yes so if you've heard of king chip and not chip the ripper a i don't believe you because everyone's heard of chip the ripper Man, Chip the Ripper is just like I heard of Chip the Ripper before I heard of Kid Cudi. I think solely because of that freestyle. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't. I don't know. That might be accurate of me as well. But or, yeah, it was at, it was at least a shock whenever I heard a Kid Cudi song that featured Chip the Ripper, and I was like, "Wait a second, yes. Interior Crocodile Alligator." <laughs> yeah, I don't even think I put two and two together at that point. Because it was he's on higher right on Man of the Moon one, and mm-hmm. then he's in. in um... God, dude, higher is such a fucking good song. <laughs> he, he was all yeah, it is. Uh, he was, King Chip was also featured as King Chip, I think, on yeah. uh, his third just, album, Indica. Just what I am. Just what I am. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. 
also a good song. <laughs> also a great, fo- oh my god, I fucking love that song. I'm going to listen to that song <laughs> later tonight. But yeah, TGIF, uh, I really like the beat on this one. It's kind of sparse and kind of ominous with this like low droning one note bass. And it's got some like drippy synths and a buzzer that kind of keeps going off every now and then. And Chip's flow accents it perfectly, I think. Yeah. He, he really, it was a great call for this track. The chorus keeps some of that kind of ominous feel, but it adds some keys and changes a little bit to kind of give it a, a distinct feeling. Uh, but yeah, I, I really like the beat in this track. Same here. And it also ended up on Man on the Moon as a bonus track. Well, there, so. So, wait, does that mean there's four? Then? there's four songs from this mixtape on man on the moon three okay. of which are bonus tracks one gotcha. of which is day and night interesting i misspoke originally i meant three bonus tracks i wonder if i was i being, gotcha i being, gotcha yeah but you know like yeah you described the music perfectly it's fucking great and uh this this one it has more of the braggadocious type of rap stuff yeah. but they both pull it off because you know as the kids say they are indeed fresh <laughs> and they really just they just pull it off. He's a young fresh fly fool. Hell yeah. <laughs> With some gold. <laughs> and you know he- <laughs> we both dropped the ball there. I wasn't even thinking about segueing. It was like, wait a minute, we're, I mean, we're at the end of this track, so now we need to we need to move on to the next one. No, it's fine, because I mean Chip, like he goes off, but fucking Cuddy's spazzing, dude. Yeah, like Cuddy's spaz on them. There we go. Yeah. Cuddy's That's not one of spaz done. though. Like He's I don't not. know. I, I feel like Kid Cuddy Again, Scott, if you're listening, no offense at all. You're you're a great musician. I don't feel like Kid Cudi is one of the best rappers. No, no, necessarily. I don't know. It's not. I don't know. It feels it's kind of fluid because he he doesn't spit fast. He doesn't go off. He doesn't spaz like track number fifteen. Cudi spasm would imply, but he he does he does rap. He does sing rap and kind of like. I don't know. He he definitely has carved his own little niche area out in the rap game. So to say that he's not a rapper or not a great rapper is kind of unfair. Yeah, I'd I'd say okay. So like you think about great rappers and you think about like technical ability right. and wordplay. And yes. I would I wouldn't necessarily say either of those are his strong suit. I mean he the like technical ability he can flip a song to his own style really well but if you're going technical ability like speed or really good hard-hitting pronunciation it's not really him he's kind of got a laid back more i don't know like feet i guess slow feel yeah he's word word wordplay is fine but it's more in his ability to properly like describe an emotion and make you feel it through right. the way through the way that he's using the words, not necessarily what the words are or how he's saying them. Right. He he's a better producer or or musician, perhaps. Yeah. Singer. He's a, he's a really maybe. good musician. But not not as good as, as Cuddy Spazzin, track number yeah. fifteen. Which I think it's just called Cuddy Spazzin because the sample is Spaz by Nerd, N E R D. I don't know wherever Pharrell came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never listened to any of their music. I only know that Pharrell came from there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he he like this one. It's he pulls. Uh, kudos to him though. He pulls in a bunch of big names on this album. Like yeah. I don't know if they were necessarily big names at the time, but he, a lot of big people came through here. And just dropped, dropped by, dropped their little style off and did their thing. And he, he name drops a lot in this fucking song at the end. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, this one, it, it picks up heavy. It's It may not actually be that much faster paced, but the cool electro beat melody makes it feel, I guess, faster. Yeah, it kind of has like a, a drum and bass kind of breakbeat feel to all yeah. of it. And yeah, I mean, it just, it sounds cool. It's not necessarily my favorite, like, Kid Cudi song off this album. Like, it, I say not necessarily my favorite Kid Cudi song because I don't, it, it's not in tune, like I said, with right. a lot of what I would consider to be typical Kid Cudi songs. I oh, but, but Maui Wowie's fine, huh? Uh, you know, Maui Wowie, <laughs> it's just, Maui Wowie is I'm a just more bitter. fun song. It's I'm a more fun bitter. song. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah, lyrically, again, kind of similar to TGIF. This is another kind of like boastful rap song about being the best in the game and not being stopped. 
Cause... Dude fucking calls out Pitbull as well. Like, where does Pitbull come into this? Like, I know does he's... he? Oh, he does. Yeah. <laughs> and he... Uh, I, like, I mean, I, I think it's mostly him just shouting out people that helped him get to where he is, I would imagine. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> through through social networking, right, he, he got all of these contacts, and he's just, like, saying, hey, guys, thanks. Thanks for what part you played in getting me to where I am. Yeah, and I mean, while Pitbull may be Mr. Worldwide, Cleveland <laughs> is the reason that Kid Cudi is, is cool. <laughs> yes! Mr. World. I fuck it. Side note, I hate Pitbull. <laughs> I really can't stand him. Uh, Cleveland is the, is the reason. It's track number 16. Another expert segue. Oof. From Joey. We're coming up on the end of the album, finally. Yes. 16 out of 17 track. Oh this one's God. got a really chill, like, night beat to it. Yeah. It's got some nice synths. Very lovely sounding. It's, yeah, like, it's just slow flowing. I mean, it sounds super cool, which fits with the theme of the song, I guess. It's, yeah. uh, it's more laid back, and I don't, I don't really know how else to describe it as, <clears throat> as well as just saying it sounds like your slower Kid Cudi song, I yeah. guess. It's, it's got, very, like, very this... Chill. Which is a good this, thing. I, yeah. I, love, I love the sound. Definitely. It's more in line with, I guess, the the future Kid Cudi sound as than other songs on this mixtape. Like Maui Waui. <laughs> like Maui Waui. <laughs> I guess we're going there. I'm just going to keep throwing Maui Waui under the Maui, bus. Maui, it's 2021. Maui Waui's in. <laughs> hell is out. It's, <laughs> it's a new year. It's a new track to hate on. Uh, You're a new man. You came back from your trip, Maui Waui. <laughs> <laughs> Maui Waui ruined my trip. <laughs> Cleveland is the reason lyrics, uh, as the song title implies, it's just a song about talking about where he's from and, and how it made him the cool guy that he is. Yeah. Which and a, lot, I mean, a lot of rappers do, I guess, at some point. They'll yeah. shout out their, their hometown in a song. Though, you know, I will say, I have been to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, maybe it's because I don't live there. But dude, there was fucking nothing to do there. It's not because you don't live there. It's because you weren't raised there. You know, and it's also because I wasn't like, yeah, I, I wasn't raised there and I wasn't of age to be at like any bars or anything. But I just remember walking around Cleveland at like 8 p.m. And there was just like <laughs> nothing. Was closed. There, there was just, yeah, it was like it was like where we live, where yeah. it's like 8 p.m. rolls around and you're like, well, the street lights are on, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I live on a highway, and like past like nine p.m., there's no traffic, <laughs> which I'm not complaining. Yeah, it's fine. It's peaceful. But very, very peaceful. But I it's get definitely... to look, look up at the the heavens at night and just see the, see some stars. Nice, dude. Track seventeen. <laughs> it, it was a little of a stretch. Heaven at night. Heaven at night. This mm -hmm. one. This, this one. This one? These, ne the, these next bars, though? This ne what is it? The next, the next verse? I, Scoopity I poop. Scoopity poop. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a, a lovely rat -a tat guitar sample, which, yeah. again, as mentioned earlier in this episode, I, I love me some rat -a tat I'm sure Joey does, too. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, th because of that and, and the slow kind of evening feel kind of makes this feel like a cutty track to me. Especially related to to Man on the Moon one, this, it's because he samples a lot of Ratatat. Well, I don't know about a lot. He worked with Ratatat a fair amount on Man on the Moon one, I think. And it's, yeah, Ratatat, Ratatat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great sound to end the mixtape on. It kind oh, of yeah. like it sets up Man on the Moon, I think, in some ways with the sound. And it's it's, it's a lovely track. I agree. This is it's a great night driving song. I yes. love to. Like, where we live, there's a lot of, like, hills. Like, you can go up and overlook the city and Hell surrounding yeah. cities. And I just love, like, being up there at night listening to this song. Or even just, like, finding a nice view. And it's just, like, finding that moment. Like, this is a song that gets, like... It's, like, part of me at this point. Just because I've heard it so many times and had, like, good experiences. Hell in yeah. the Not even good experiences. Like, it was a great time. But it's, like, it's been, like the the tiny shiny diamond in the middle of just shit parts of my life i guess where it's like you can find a moment of peace Fuck and that. this song has helped that so it's like this song it's not a song i can really be objective about i guess i mean but, objectively it's fucking great hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, lyrically it's it's just about like you know enjoying an evening right looking up the yeah. stars and and just kind of dreaming of floating on up there 
may be induced by mar- marijuana, but, but it, you know, it's it's more than that because like yeah. it, it's just like I don't know, just the feeling of like staring at the stars and and like you said, something scenic like overlooking the city at night. Like it's it's very beautiful, it's very peaceful, and just kind of feeling like you're you're floating up to the heavens, which yeah, lovely. It is like it's like finding your moment where no matter what is happening or what's going on you can you, you can at least look for this 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 little moment that's like your heaven at night and it's just i don't know feeling feeling having a moment to show you that even though whatever you're feeling right now may be shitty that there is good that can happen and if it can happen once it can happen more than once and just like I don't know. It's it's like hope, I guess. Hell yeah. I'm I'm ecstatic that you've shared this album and this song with me because like I, I don't know, it it music is so personal and everyone listening to a song hears something different and to find those songs that have such a huge impact on you and and such staying power in your life, especially in such a positive way as you've described. It's 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 lovely. It's it's what music is about, I think, or or at least one of the highlights of music existing is is just being able to have those experiences and then being able to share it with somebody and and share it with the world that listens to our <laughs> podcast. The which world, is so many people. And it, I don't know. It, it it allows you to be vulnerable, but also like I don't, I don't know. It's fun to share experience, which is why we're doing this podcast. Yeah, but. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you had such experience. Overall, I'm glad I finally listened to this album, mixtape, even though it was forced upon me. Uh, but it, it makes perfect sense as uh, an Origins <laughs> album of Kid Cudi. I don't think I like it as much as his other albums, uh, just because, again, there, there's that kind of like lack of confidence and the lack of experience that is kind of apparent to it. Um, yeah. But there are definitely some really cool tracks that stand out on this uh, mixtape that I'll be coming back to for sure. And uh, Hell yeah. it makes total sense knowing how many samples are on this and why you like it so much. Again, obviously because of your personal connection, but like just knowing what you like and, and what you enjoy, you enjoy looking up a lot of samples and, and hearing music and finding the origin samples and stuff like that. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense that this is uh, one of your go-to Kid Cudi albums. <laughs> Enough. Yeah, and it's, I will say, it was one of my go-tos, and then I kind of hit a stride where I didn't have, like, my iPod, because I used to have my iPod, I know, fucking Apple fanboy, but <laughs> I'm not, by the way, I hate Apple, but <laughs> I had an iPod, because that's just was the thing of yeah. the time, and then it, it broke, and I hadn't, I wasn't living at my parents' house anymore, but my iTunes was on there was on their computer and i was like i'm not gonna go like buy a new mp3 player and just run over like i don't know i had spotify so i was like fuck it i guess i'll start using spotify this album is not on spotify so i kind of just never listened to it and then i finally got all my music from my parents house to put on my new computer and this was on there and i just the moment i hit play i was like fuck dude this is it, like, it, it left a gap that you didn't realize was yeah. there, and, and now it's filled again. Yeah, it's nice. Well, I'm glad that it's back in your life. I'm glad that we discussed it. It was a fun two weeks, two and a half weeks. I actually didn't listen to it a whole lot on my trip, but I listened to it when I came back and got my, got my shit together. But uh, next week, <gasps> we're going to be listening to Peach Pit's album, oh. Being So Normal. <laughs> uh, I didn't have anything prepared to follow up this album uh again i don't have a huge catalog of hip-hop albums um but uh yeah peach pit was it was fresh in my memory because we talked about passion pit i thought passion pit was peach pit and i wanted to check out peach pit so now we're gonna check out peach pit with their album being so normal came out in 2017 uh not really sure what to expect from it as an album one of the songs on it i have heard and i liked and i i really like the song so i know what that song feels like but uh we're gonna fucking we're gonna see how we feel about the album, and <laughs> I guess by extension the band next week uh, when we discuss it. Until then, let us know what you think uh, of this episode of this album. Again, just another plug: go listen to all of Gid Cudi's music because <laughs> it's all fantastic. 
Hell yeah. Uh, you can hit us up on, on social media. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have albums you want us to listen to or if you have personal experiences with songs that you want to share. I love hearing about that shit because, again, like it, it's such a big part of music and it's so personal and sharing those stories is, is part of the joy of music, I think. Uh, but yeah, so leave us co- comments. Uh, and until next week, I suppose, stay in our feedback. Bye.